Hey, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to another episode of What Now. I'm a little bit late because my guest is a little bit late, but I figured, you know what, people are actually hitting me up. Where are you? Aren't you supposed to go live? And so I just decided to get on here, and I hate monologues. Everybody that knows me knows that I hate it when guests are late and have to do monologues. So I figured I'm going to wait 10 minutes until he's here. But I don't want everybody to think, oh, she's not going to be on today and then not come back. So I am on. Uh, <laughs> yes, Ali, we in this bitch. Um, let me hit up my uh, my backup person. Um, yeah. Anyway, what's up, James? What up, Romeo? What up, big man? I see y'all. Um, if you have any questions for me, feel free to ask them now until my guest arrives. Um Again, I hate monologues, so let me tell you about my week. It is Wednesday. Um, I have really nothing to talk about other than I'm still healthy. I'm still alive. We're still in a pandemic. Nothing's changed, which is why I basically have nothing to talk about. Uh, my car is in good shape. Went to have my car fixed yesterday. Well, it wasn't fixed. It just needed to be serviced. Uh, Romeo, I need to work with you because I haven't heard from you in forever and I hit you back and I never heard from you. You're so bad at hitting me back. So you need to hit me back. Um, strategy. What's up, Dwight? Uh, what's up, Box? Um, thank you all for always being my supporters. What's my plans for the weekends? Let me see on my calendar. I have absolutely nothing. Uh, me and James may do a room together on Clubhouse on Sunday. We're just going to have to uh, talk about that. Uh, yes, I feel like I'm cheating on Battle for the Throne, but uh, yeah, me and James are going to do a music room. Um, but yeah, so anyway, other than that, I have no plans for the weekend. I wanted to go see my mom, but my mom was like, I got shit to do, so you can come next week. Yeah, that's my mom. For all those that always ask me, um, <laughs> you better get some sleep. I know! I'll go to sleep on time. I'll go to sleep on time. Uh, I'll go to sleep this weekend too. Uh, yeah, for everybody that's actually wondering about the relationship with my mom, uh, since I don't talk to my mom every day, that's my mother. Whenever I say, Mom, I'm going to come and have lunch with you this week, um, she's like, oh, no, this week is not good. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm going to go see my mom next week. Oh, uh, one of the things that I'm excited about on Friday is I'm going to catch up with my sister in Houston. I haven't talked to her in a minute, so we got all this this stuff to catch up on, you know, uh, our soap series, lives. Um, Box asked me, what is my favorite song right now? Hmm. Honestly, not because James is, is in the, in the, in the, in the live right now, but his new song, which is, um, released on April 2nd called In the Dark, uh, is pretty much my favorite song right now. Um, but it's not out yet, but I heard it. And so y'all better check for that. It's a, it's a great song. And I keep, I keep. Uh, catching myself uh, singing along the the chorus that's always a good thing if the chorus sticks then you know you got some type of radio hit at least um yeah so that's my favorite song i have i don't have a favorite new song i guess um i do have my obviously my spotify playlist and stuff but it's usually old school stuff uh, I've been listening to a lot of the guys from the club because I felt like, you know, let me just go back to that, um, you know, support them with a little stream here and stream there from the Netherlands. <laughs> let me see what's on my list right now. Uh, obviously, one of my favorite um, EPs is um, from <laughs> from my, my own artist, Lady Shina. Uh, Fly is definitely still one of my favorite songs. Um, Walking is definitely one of my favorite songs. Uh, so yeah, that's it. Go check out Lady Shina. If you don't know who she is, go check out my uh, my Instagram. She's on there. Uh, she's in my highlights. So listen to her EP. We're coming out with the next EP soon. The next, the new single from the next EP will be released soon. Um, hey Lou, what's up? Um, I appreciate everybody watching me do a monologue until DJ King Assassin is here. So whoever has questions for me, here's your chance. Shoot your shot. Um, or give me uh, something to talk about. Uh, he said he was running late. Um, <laughs> yes, Ali, I'm always ready for your single with Nate, but I don't think he's going to go through with that. So 
we'll see uh yeah you need to really convince him i don't think he he wants you on that maybe it should be a, a bonus track or something but yeah i'd love to hear that one um yeah other than that hey if you have any uh new artists that i should listen to or songs please shoot them to me in a dm not yourself just other people i don't want no songs from people pitching themselves i want people pitching other people supporting other people um yeah oh lou's got new stuff coming out so you know check out his instagram feed because he be posting a lot of dope shit that's coming up so yes lou we see you um i got nine i got more people without a guest than i have with a guest so we'll see how this goes and i'm still in awe of the six thousand likes i got on a flyer a flyer my flyers never get love um, but 6,000 likes is probably the total accumulated of all my likes ever on all my social media channels. So thanks, DJ King Assassin, who is late uh, for getting me all these likes on a flyer. Uh, we'll see how many of your fans are going to be tuned into this, uh, this talk. Uh, if he shows up. When he shows up, I should say. Anyway, um, hi, everybody. Jur journey jur uh, yeah journeys anders journeys anders i don't know how to pronounce that some people have the most difficult names on here if you don't know what it is uh who got questions who got questions what's up ronte um i'm trying to call you but i gotta call you after this probably about some stuff um everybody if you see this person in here cpl hardy Hit him up for all your designs. He does all my websites and stuff. Um, yeah. Uh, tell us where your passion for music came from. Oh, that's a good one. My passion for music came from my dad. My dad was a musician. He was a guitarist, a producer, a singer. He was he was everything. And um, actually, this month, March 31st, will be the second anniversary of his passing. So this is a... This is a tough month, but we're celebrating his life. So me living what I do is celebrating my dad because everything music comes from my dad. So, yep, he's the one that instilled it in me uh, through DNA and through upbringing. So thanks for that question, um, Martin. And yes, it's great to get to know you, Mr. Boxer. We're, we're going to get that talk done, too. Maybe you should be on here. I'm sure you have an aspiring story. Um, He's a boxer, so yeah. And he's a model. And uh, and he's moved all around. So I'm sure he has a journey. So we'll be talking on this side. Um, as you can see, I'm wearing my little track outfit again. Uh, waiting on my new photos for, for my shoot. Um, yep, that's what I did last weekend. So this weekend I'm not doing shit. I'm not doing anything this weekend. Let me know if there's anything going on online that I should actually uh, tune into. I have 11 viewers. This is more than I have without uh, without a guest, with a guest, without a guest, then with a guest. Uh, what's up, Nate? Thanks for tuning in. My guest is late. He he warned me on time, so I'm just doing the monologue because I didn't want people to think I didn't have a live going on. So I've been talking for about 10 minutes now, and. Um, People are asking me questions, so here's your chance, Nate. If there's ever a question that you wanted to ask me, you ask me all the questions in the world. Like people, honestly, uh, nature is one of the most inquiring people. Very curious about other cultures and, and knowing things and learning new uh, languages. Uh, much respect to him for that. I appreciate it. Oh, also, today he's wearing uh, a pair of my favorite sneakers that I still haven't found in my size. So... Yeah. Oh, my noodles were great. Yep. My noodles were awesome. And I have some leftovers for tomorrow because uh, there's nobody else that can eat my noodles. But yeah, man, those shoes he's wearing today. Man, I was crying. I was hating. I was a full on hater on the shoes today. But I'm happy that you got dope shoes. Shoe game is a must. Um, yeah, people, we just discuss shoes all the time. Uh, any more questions? Because if this dude don't show up, I have nothing to talk about. I cannot entertain people on a live. That's not me. I'm not some person that wants to be uh, doing videos and stuff. Oh, I hate it. So 
Uh, anyway, please, please ask me another question. Oh, Mr. Rob Manga, I'm so sorry. I know I was still supposed to email you about some stuff and I haven't been able to get to it. I need to write it down on my to-do list. I'm so sorry. This has been probably a month already. I'm slacking. Thank you for tuning in, everybody. DJ Rob Manga is my big brother. He's He's been a DJ for like, I don't know, 30, 40 years, something like that. He up there, but he's still rocking it and uh, he shows up are the best he plays the best music he once did a 24 hour a vinyl event i organized it together with him it was his event I helped him organize it and we had back-to-back -back djs spinning for 24 hours because the first event he had he did 24 hours vinyl by himself by himself 24 7. that's how dope of a dj he is dj rob manga check him out um james i just got some new custom yeezys made oh send me a photo i want to see that Custom, okay. Mm, I hope they're cool because I'm not a fan of the Yeezys. No, I don't want to talk about coming to America too because I know there's people in here that hadn't seen it yet. So I'm not going to spoil it for them. But uh, all I can say is that Leslie Jones stole the show for me. Yep, she totally made that movie for me. Um, yeah, what's up King Pop Off? <laughs> oh my gosh, if this dude don't show up, man. I don't know. It's just it's going to be me talking for a whole hour uh, and it's going to cut in on, on his time. But um, I'm tired. So y'all going to have to keep me up in here. Who else got questions? For those who don't know, if you are on Clubhouse, let me just plug the club. Battle for the Throne Club. That's the, the, the number one club on Clubhouse. We run it. We run things. And uh, we have dope conversations. We support each other. We help each other. Um, you know, with business, with personal lives, we, we just there. We have real ass talks about everything. So find us, Battle for the Throne on Clubhouse, um, every morning, 9 p uh, 9 p.m., uh, 9 a.m. Eastern Time. We have the breakfast battle. It's fun. It's dope. There's a lot of legends in there uh, from the music industry. So please get in there. Okay, Box, what is the one thing you can recommend to help musicians through this pandemic? Well, the one thing I can recommend is watch my IGTV uh, What Now series. Watch all the episodes. That'll help you through. It's so much information, so much knowledge, so many gems, so much advice to get through this pandemic, but also how to deal with this industry, how to navigate in this industry, uh, what to do um, in this industry, uh, who to work with, who not to work with, what to pay attention to. So yes, that is the one thing I can recommend for musicians in the pandemic. Watch the episodes I've done. This is episode number 83 or so. So yeah, there's um, 80 episodes on my uh, IGTV. Click on that. Just find some people that you think are interesting. Click on it, put it on. You don't have to watch it. You can listen to it, put it on when you're cleaning the house or when you're in the shower or whatever. And yeah, that's the one thing I can recommend because this one recommendation has so many other recommendations in those episodes. I'm clever. Uh, what's up, Avery? How are you, Mr. Um, 22, uh, 20 years uh, unlegally married <laughs> and two years legally? <laughs> I'm sorry, that's just gonna be a thing. Um, yes, Sunday, James, we just got to figure out a time because yes, that's going to be a good one. Um, Hey, what's up? Hip hop collector. Oh my gosh. He's the best. I like his feet the most of all. <laughs> Come on, Nate. Tiramisu or Red Velvet? That's easy. That's Tiramisu all day, every day. But Red Velvet is a good second. Definitely a good second. Uh, how did King assess me, Tupac? Well, yeah, that that's going to be a question, but he going to have to be here for that. He was late with some promo shit, and, you know, he hit me up fair and square. Like, he was going to be late, but um, he said 10 minutes. I'm looking at my clock. It's 18 minutes in, but I do appreciate the 16 viewers I got. Yo, I, I have never had this many viewers tune into my live before, so at least not me by myself. So I appreciate everybody tuning in, but most of it is my family. And Box be asking me all these questions. What's the one thing that you would change in the music industry right now? Um, the one thing I would change in the music industry right now, I hate that question, but is, um, uh, does it have to be something that I can actually change or can it just be something that I wish would change? Because it would be entitlement. I want everybody to get rid of their entitlement and just support everybody and not expect things to come easy and for free without shit in return. 
That's what I want to change in the music industry. Um, what's up, Kyoshi? How are you doing? Thanks for tuning in. What you up to lately? And why is my phone acting up every time? <sighs> this happened uh, the other day. My phone's acting crazy. All right, I'm going to go on until 9.30. If he doesn't show up, I'm just going to reschedule it. Because I'm not doing this for till whenever. Oh my God, I'm so tired. Oh, people just don't understand how much this takes of me. I do, I do it Mondays and Wednesdays. Plus, on Monday, I got a really dope guest next Monday. I did all my hair and shit, so yeah, somebody better show up today. Or I can get somebody else in here until he shows up. Who wants to come into my life? I'll do that at 9.30. If he doesn't show up um, at 9.30, then I'll just uh, have somebody else in there. Be ready. Be ready. Well, you don't have to call him because he already hit me up. He said he was going to be 10 minutes late. So, oh, thank you, Dwight. Thanks. Um... Oh, Mia is fine. Mia is doing really good because, uh, yeah, man, she she got clean top to bottom. Oh, my gosh. She smelled fresh. She was, yeah, she was purring like a little kitten. Um, oh, Mitchie can come on. Oh, I love to talk to Mitchie on here. I mean, we got to actually schedule a talk, but we can do Mitchie freestyle it. Um, yeah, and I can post this one, but then people have to... You know fast forward through this monologue of mine but uh yeah oh wait there's a question in the question box you should do management workshop for music managers <laughs> actually uh i have master classes and workshops uh so my way or no way yes i have them so uh i actually have to organize them uh, but they're more so management workshops for everybody in the industry because there's a lot of independent artists that don't necessarily have a manager yet so i give out a lot of information on the industry and how to navigate before you have a manager and what you need to look out for when wanting a manager or needing one so yeah that's uh i do the workshops in a master class i'm actually organizing a, a master class with um yeah i see him i see him hold on uh, I'm organizing a, a master class uh, in combination with uh, somebody on the publishing side. So we can uh, tag team on both of these uh, subjects. But uh, as soon as I have something going on with that or something planned, then I will post it, obviously. Uh, Mitch, do you want to come in and just join me for a minute until my guest decides to show up? Uh, I'm just going to invite you. We'll see. We'll see how this goes. I have no clue, but I had 6,000 likes on my flyer and the guest ain't showing up. Oh, well. What now? What now? We're going to get a new guest. And he declined. <laughs> we are not getting a new guest. Ali, he declined. He's not coming in here. So what you talking about? You, you want to come in here? No, he ain't coming in here. So yeah anyway what's up dj dynamite okay everybody dj dynamite right here used to be my sidekick for my radio show 20 years ago yep um oh mitchie <laughs> well dj dynamite in here uh yeah he was uh he was my sidekick when i had my own radio show yep that was dope okay mitchie here we go again all right don't decline me please i felt i felt rejected Oh my gosh, in my own life. Oh, there you go. What's up, pretty lady? How are you? Thank you for wanting to be a uh, freestyle guest. A freestyle guest? Oh, yeah, okay. a freestyle guest because my guest ain't showing up. He late and now he, he later than he was supposed to be. So thank you for wanting to join me. Why are you in the car? Where are you going? To the airport. Where are you going? Where are you flying to? I'm flying from Denver to Dallas. You know, I stay working. I know, but I don't want you to. I don't want you to get into no accidents while you're on this live. So, you please doing be, okay? be safe. Okay, cool. So, so what are you going to do in Dallas? Tell us what you um, working oh, on. Just, I'm going. I'm just going to pick up a car in Dallas. I'm about to go buy a little car in Dallas. That's what I'm. Okay, cool. And then you're going to drive it back. Uh oh, I didn't hear you. Are you going to drive it back? Yeah, yeah, I'm driving it back. I'm a road warrior. If you, you ask anybody about Mitch, I'm everywhere. I get on the road and get to the business. That's why I asked where you at, because I know you're always in a different place. Um, yeah. We got to talk about these dogs, too. 
Most definitely. Remember? That's serious business. That's serious business right there. But so the question I want to ask you, so this this is, okay, for the people that are tuning in, this is a freestyle conversation because I'm supposed to have a guest, but my guest ain't here, so Mitchie was kind enough to, to keep me company instead of having me do a dumbass monologue. Um, but I was asking Mitch about a dog. And so I know you told me you ship the dogs, yeah. but you know, I want to see the dog before it becomes my baby. So what would you recommend well, me do? Um, what you want to do if you're trying to buy a dog, you really want to know the um, you want to know the breeder and know the dogs right. themselves. When I say knowing the dogs, I mean like if you if you if you're about to spend top top dollar on a dog, you probably gonna know a lot about the history and the family and all the genetic makeup of the dog. Right. So 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 before I would even go into buying a dog, I would be familiar with the breeder. So that means I would have already been to their yard, background seen check. their dogs. I'll fly somewhere. If you're going to spend 10 bands, 8 bands on a dog, you want to go see the dog. You got to go pull up. Yeah, but I can't fly to where you are right now. That's the problem. Like, So then they got I a trust thing where, you. Like, in the dog. Uh, your connection is cutting out. All right. We lost Mitch. He's He's, he's probably driving through a bogus area. Let's wait until he comes back. So anyway, yeah, he uh, he got the good dogs, but I can't fly to the States right now to uh, to see the dogs. So unfortunately, I'm going to have to do it over here. Oh, there you go. Hey, sorry about that. I'm yeah. a bad guest today. I'm a bad guest with this. With, 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 hey, at least you showed up. The bad guest is the one right. that's not showing up. <laughs> yeah, but 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 if, if you if you miss me, I'm just saying you want to know the dog and Yeah, this is not a good. <laughs> All right, we, we appreciate you. Yeah, you always in the mountains. <laughs> no. Nope. Okay, I can't hear you. I cannot hear you for shit. Okay, this is not okay. Somebody, let me know. Can you hear him or can you hear me? Because I'm just not. I'm yeah. I'm not hearing shit. It's this is this feels like the last time he was um he was uh on, in our room driving through the mountains. So, yep. Okay. Sorry, Mitch. It's not working. I appreciate you trying, though. Uh, yeah, I see more people trying to come in here. I don't. If I don't know you, I'm not. I'm not putting you on my live because I don't know what you're going to talk about. Uh, so yeah, Mitch left. Um, Ali, I might put you in here. You working? Uh, oh my gosh, I can't believe that my guest didn't show today. Hold on, is he sending me a message or nope? He's oh he is. Oh, he's he's having troubles with his Wi-Fi. Uh, why is it, I keep saying it, why is it that we can go all the way to the freaking moon, but we can't, but we can't um, have good Wi-Fi? Okay, so here he go. Let's see. Mitchie, thank you. I don't know if you're still on here, but thank you. All right, then. Finally, thank you. It's been a minute. We was trying to get the Wi-Fi rolling up here, man. The Wi-Fi was going kind of slow. I, I kind of have that problem when on Clubhouse. You know, Clubhouse has me, you know, going in and out sometimes. You know, it's just because of the heavy traffic, that's all. But hopefully uh, this will run smooth and we'll have everything on and rolling. Hey, Fresh is in the house. I'm excited to be here, man. It took DJ a King Assassin, thank you so much for being a guest. You made it. You made it. We got half hour left. No, I'm kidding. We can just talk until... We're finished. I hope your Wi-Fi stays on, though. Oh, for sure. All right. Well, thank you for joining me. I appreciate you wanting to be a guest. Um, there's a lot of stuff that I would love to talk to you about, but most people that have tuned into my live know that this was born out of um, the pandemic, you know, trying to motivate and inspire people while the whole creative industry is shut down. And so my first question is always, how did the pandemic affect you personally and professionally? Well, professionally is, you know, shows, you know, because I DJ a lot of shows, especially in L.A. and Los Angeles area. It's almost every week I'm booked up. 
it affected that to the fullest. Uh, actually, this month, the 27th is going to be the opening in Whittier Boulevard with our first show, actually, since COVID. So, oh, wow. you know, it's pretty good, you know, for now, but it's not as much shows, you know. Uh, like I said, the first one is opening up this month, and we're glad to even have that one because it's been close to about a year now without no yeah. shows. And how did it affect you uh, personally? Did you did you change anything on your routine to your health? Did you change your your, your workouts or? Well, I always had you know a, a heavy routine with my health, being a diabetic. You know, what I mean, so I always watched my intake on what I was eating, especially sugar. But it more uh, affected me, I say, with my kids because you know I felt sad for them because they couldn't go to school no more. You right. know, and. It takes a lot of these kids now because they give them extra work now for school. Uh, most of the kids nowadays, you know, I don't like how the school system is actually treating these kids now during COVID because they actually assign the kids more work. And it's like even right. more crazy than even school. Yeah. And I learned this by, you know, visiting numerous parents and asking questions, you know, uh, and the same thing. They're saying the kids are getting too much work in this pandemic. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's it's for the parents. It's been a lot because and they have to work at home and they got to school the kids and it's it's a lot of stuff and help them with their homework and everything um, right. and the lessons. So yeah, that's definitely something that I've noticed from all my friends who are um, that are having to do with the kids at home. They can't wait for the kids to go back to school. Right. You know, and, and kids the, also. Yeah, for the main artists too, going back to the, uh, you know professional part as far as how the pandemic affects not just myself but other artists especially ones that are signed to major labels because the ones signed to major labels actually you know depend on shows to make money because they signed these yeah. 365 deals but not the good part of me i stayed independent you know what i mean i have my own distribution and right. uh you know i'm able to still make money through the profits through streams you know a lot of the artists they sign off a lot of those you know royalties uh yeah. being that they're big names and they're actually like you know really dependent on shows so right. it affected them real bad yeah so you've been in this game but, super long though oh yeah for a minute you know for a so minute, you've uh, you've seen every, you've seen pretty much everything man i've seen a lot i've seen a lot of friends come and go i've seen a lot of people uh get robbed i've seen a lot of people die i've seen a lot of people uh you know sign the wrong contracts i some of the best artists uh, that I've known uh, actually never make it to. You know, I mean, you see a lot. You see a lot of people that are talented too in this music game that never get to make it. Right. You know, it's uh, you got to have more than just talent to make it in this industry. You got to have the character. You got to have the pizzazz. You got to have the, you know, uh, the energy in you, man. It's the energy, and and people feed off of that energy, and people are attracted to that energy like a magnet. So you really have to, you know, have all that in one in order to really be successful because sometimes uh, people, they, they have the raw talent and they could rap real good, they could flow real good. and uh, But then when you meet them, it's just like, blah, there's nothing to them. There's no- They have uh, no personality. No personality, nothing, you know, and I've seen a lot of them artists too and that's why they never do make it. You know, you have to have the whole package. Yeah. And communication is the number one thing. You know what I mean? You definitely have to, you know, communicate with your fans because your fans are everything. They, shout out to Giada, I see her in the chat. They on pay fresh doing it live yeah uh that's what it's about is you know interacting with the fans and getting on social networks like this you know it's a whole new era now so a lot of the people from the past that come from my golden era of the 90s of hip-hop didn't right. really you know graduate to the new era of socialism when it comes to uh all the social platforms you know a lot of, it was just like new to them and they didn't want to go that route that's you know. true. So how did you, what was for you the defining moment of, you know, turning the music industry into a business for you? What was for you the moment where you said, hey, I can turn this into my income, into my daily job? Well, I think it was more uh, when, you know, I wasn't getting paid for what I was doing. And my mom and dad were looking at me crazy, like, what are you doing? I just love doing it, you know, for the fun of it. You know, it was just the yeah. love. and. Then you realize that you're getting older. How are you going to make a living out? And that's when I learned the business because a lot of people they didn't learn the business even to this day. They just got into it for the fun of it and you know didn't make no money, so they had to get a job. Um, right. I was in it since I was 16 years old. You know, DJing for well-known rap groups and. Uh, Who were the first me. rap groups that you were DJing for? Well, I DJed for uh, Boss. 
out of Detroit. They were the first female gangster rap group. Right, I, I remember. Right now. Um, Tupac Shakur, DJ for him. DJ for uh, Easy e Scratching for Easy e mm -hmm. um, Cocaine. Rob Bass. Yeah, you did some project with him, yeah. Actually, I got a call from Rob Bass uh, last night. He wants me to DJ for him now uh, on all his new sets now for Rob Bass. Rest in peace, DJ Easy Rock. That was my boy. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, yeah, so we go way back. You know, Rob Bass has a hit single, It Takes Two to Make a Thing Go Right. So. Right, right, yeah, of course. World I famous. Got good, I got the good news last night, Pay Fresh, so. Uh, all right, well, I, you heard it here first. Rob Bass, It Takes Two, man. I'm I'm excited about that, so. You know, uh, good things happening, man. Good things coming. Uh, like I said, D Yada here that is actually yeah. on this chat system right now, folks. She's doing a movie, uh, you know, a little biopic of her and Boss. So I'm looking forward to that, too. Uh, yeah, she hit me up. I got to hit her back about some stuff. So. Yeah, we got to get her on this show, Pay Fresh. We yeah. Make it no, definitely. Definitely. And when you start touring again, you better come over to Europe as well. Come, yeah, where are you at, actually? In I'm Europe? in Amsterdam. Where Oh my goodness, we're gonna smoke real big out there. Amsterdam well, you up. Can. Yes. Oh man. <laughs> I love it. I've never been out there. You haven't? No, never. Have but you toured outside the states though? They always, they always tell me you need to go to Amsterdam. You need to go to Amsterdam. You need to uh, go over there and smoke some stuff. Okay. Man. Well, we're still open. I mean, we're still open to smoke, but I mean you you from Cali, so you you know how yeah, to so smoke. I'm, yeah. But you know, you guys were like really legal before everybody else was, like in yeah. a coffee shop like that. Now it's open like that here, but you know, right. still Amsterdam. It's still <laughs> different. Yeah. My friend actually did a mixtape. His name is Kilo, and he had me host it, and it's called Gramsterdam. So wow. Go, uh, check out the Gramsterdam mixtape. We got part one and part two by Kilo, Grams Uncut. And well, I'll tell from. you something. I have a mixtape with Sky Zoo called the Amsterdam mixtape because I used to DJ. So. Wow. <laughs> but that's a long, long time ago. Hey, you got to get back on the wheels of steel. Once a DJ, always a DJ, pay for us. I know, but I do too much. I do too much. I can't do it all. You know, gotta pick and choose. In the background, at least have the turntables in the background, maybe. Uh, yeah, see, I don't even have the turntables anymore, so. Yeah. I was I was waiting on Eric Sermon to give me the turntables he said he was going to give me, but he never he never did. Yeah, I'm calling him out. Let's get a hold of the Green Eye Bandit and get those tables for you. I'll call Eric myself and tell him. Hey, Do it. Eric. He's going. You know, he knows me. He knows he owes me. So he's going to laugh if you hit him up saying that. He's going to be like, "Oh, she talking about me again?" Um, but yeah. So I was going to ask you because everybody had the question: How did mm -hmm. you meet Tupac? I met Pac back in the days in the Bay Area where I'm from, because I'm originally from, you know, the Bay Area, Oakland, Frisco, San Jose. Pac had came down at a young age, and he connected with Lola, Layla Steinberg. Then from there, he uh, started working with Strictly Dope and a couple of other cats that I worked with, too, like Capital B, the Funk Soldiers. Uh, when he was with Digital Underground, I already had my relationship with Digital Underground and Shock G, so we kind of all connected from there, doing Gavin conventions. That's when I first met him when he barely came down he still had like a gumby haircut he didn't smoke no weed or nothing he wasn't smoking that time uh i was i was having him the weed but he didn't want it but it was all good but then oh, wow. on, he, yeah i didn't smoke as much as he did it anymore so it's a trip how time right. changed but uh yeah he was uh he was young he was determined uh full of energy full of energy tupac he, he's one guy that I must say to this day, I never work with anybody that works as fast as Tupac works because Tupac will hear the beat, write it right there on a drop of a dime and go in the studio and act like it's a song he was rehearsing all night. Right. And, and do it in five minutes, the, the actual rap. If it's a five minute verse, you do it like, you know, three to five minutes and it's over with, done. I never even heard him do like two takes as far as like, let me do it over. I heard to. that more. I heard that about him, yeah. Yeah, he didn't have to. He didn't have to. See, one thing about Tupac, too, is uh, a lot of people didn't know this. I always like sharing stuff that people don't know about Tupac, his uh, recording capabilities. When we recorded, I was there for the whole Me Against the World album, and I always tripped out what he did because it didn't dawn on me till like, later on in life, you know, just remembering things. He would speed right. up the take. He would speed up the tape because we recorded on 
large, big two-inch reels about this, you know, this mm -hmm. big and when it comes to the tape, digital tape. And there's a way you can move the pitch of the tape. So what he did was he speeded it up just a little bit, just a little bit when he did his verses. And then after he finished it, he put it back to normal, zero, oh, zero. Wow. So that's why his voice sounded deeper in a lot of songs. That was actually his trademark, his, his, his secret. I knew it because I was in there every day with him. Right. I, other producers, I, I don't even think they even seen that, but I did because I was right was, there with him. Was he one of your favorite artists to have worked with? Um, Can I say that? Or were, that you worked with so many I people. Knew, at that time, I knew him already. So it wasn't like, like I wanted to work with E E. That's who I wanted to work with at that point. I ain't gonna lie, I'm gonna tell you the truth because I already knew Pac. Pac was he was dope, but to to me and Tupac, like E E was the shit. Can we cuss on here? E E was you know uh, the one that we looked up to and Ice Cube. But uh, that's who I wanted to work with. Then I finally got to work with him around that same time I was working with Tupac in L A. and just scratching for him. And right. uh, that's who I wanted to work with. Like I was like, man, I gotta work with E E. Man, I gotta work with him. But see, at this time, Tupac wasn't, he wasn't famous like Easy e He was like, oh, that's Tupac in the Bay. That's our boy. Right. And a lot of people didn't take him like as serious when he was alive until he like really died. Like when All Eyes on Me came out and all that, it, it was the epitome for him, you know, but that all happened so fast. Within uh, 94, 95, and 96, within three years. Yeah. Do you think do you think you would still be working with him now if he was still alive? Oh, of course, yeah. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt about that. Yeah, his talent was definitely gone too soon. Yeah. Yeah, he was a he was a good dude, man. He always was full of laughter and full of comedy, man. He was a com comedian. You know, he would put on his wigs as Rick James uh gig and just like do his little uh comedian stuff. He was funny. Kind of like how White Clef is cuz White Clef is the same way. You know, working with Wyclef, uh, another legend that I work with, uh, he's somebody that is full of energy, too. But an amazing, you know, musician, Wyclef. Right. He's a musician. Like, he plays all his instruments, like, live, right there. I want to go back a little bit more about you. I mean, it's great to hear these stories about the artists that you've worked with because you've worked with so many people. But um, having been in this industry for so long, working with pretty much the greatest of the greatest um, over a whole different spectrum as well, what are some of the mistakes you've made in the industry that turned out to be great lessons that you can give out to people now? I would say learning the business because if you don't learn the business and learn how to get your publishing, then you're going to be wondering where's my money and them labels are going to end up just taking all your money at the end of the year. Is that what happened it. to you? Oh, yeah, of course. I mean, you know, when I was younger, I didn't know about publishing. I didn't, no one told me about it until like I started saying, how am I going to get paid? When right. Pay for and people would tell me that. And I'd be like, and I still wouldn't give it no I went sign up for ASCAP or BMI because at that time you really needed like a song on the radio, a hit song to get paid. So I kind of like didn't trip off of even, you know, fulfilling that until now the digital age came. And of course now I fill out everything and, you know, get paid for all of the publishing rights that you can, because you can get paid four different types of publishing rights. One is right. if you're, you know, as far as a producer, you get paid and then you get paid if you're a, artist featured and that's another form of publishing then you have your performance publishing too which is another third way then you have your label ownership which is the yeah. fourth one and, you know i own all four now so before i was on other labels and they were taking the money they were taking the publishing right exactly i was just if you don't know the business then you ain't gonna get paid well you know? before you got in here somebody told me i was i was supposed to do workshops and master class i actually do those and i'm going to organize one with a publisher or somebody that's experienced in publishing. So it's definitely good information that everybody needs to know when you're still independent, especially. Um, yeah, familiarize yourself with the business. A lot of people don't know, Pay Fresh, that, you know, your performance royalties is, is one of the big ones. And we were talking about that earlier when yeah. we said about COVID-19 coming in. You know, you can actually get paid for just performing at any public venue. Yeah. 
an ASCAP or BMI or CSAC will pay you. A lot of these artists don't know that. They're like missing out on money. Yeah, we got our equivalent over here for, for collecting those uh, royalties. Yeah. PPL. Yeah. It's called the PPL. That's who everybody out there has to go through, the PPL. And it's, it's I'm sorry, it's funny, but my partner is engineer, and he's an engineer and he's just talking about the tape flex button. What a great trick. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, man, that's, that's amazing. I mean, for Tupac to be thinking on that type of level back in them days was just amazing. He was ahead of his time. Yeah, he he's a, um, he always comes in with the technical stuff when I don't know. That's why we, we, we teamed yeah, up so he, well. He's, 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 he's an cool engineer. Way. Yeah, what did he uh, call it? The, uh, what, the tape? The tape flex button. Tape flex button, wow. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, he knows all that stuff. Um, I have a question from Stacy Bay 415. Did you ever do shows with DJ Mind Motion? Oh, yeah, yeah. My motion is Eric, uh, my boy Eric, man, Easy E. We call him Easy E too. He was one of the hottest DJs in San Francisco, and uh, I mean, you could ask Eric too. I mean, just my motion. He was around all of us, Digital Underground, Tupac. I mean, a lot of people they ask me like, "Damn, you were around Tupac?" I mean, it wasn't a a huge surprise to be around Tupac if you're from the Bay Area. You're gonna run into him, right? If you're into the hip hop scene, just like you know, Easy E, my motion. You know, we're talking about the DJ now uh, who they had asked that if I worked with him. Yeah, I did plenty of shows with him and uh, Red, Positively Red, uh, all the DJs of Scratch Pickles. We're talking about Hubert, Mixmaster Mike, Apollo yeah, Paul, yeah, yeah. Uh, Grand Mix of TDC. All of them, those are the cats I grew up with. So who are, one of your, who are one of your inspirations, you know, learning the craft? As far as DJing? Yeah. Just DJ I mean, ain't producing anything. Uh, DJ Cash Money. DJ Cash, Cash Money. Cash Money. I was, work uh, with his sister. Oh, for real? I wow. actually have a master class next week for his sister's academy in London. And what does she do? Does she DJ too or something? No, she used to be. So she used to be a break dancer, and then now she's a singer, and she got her own academy, and she does vocal coaching and all of that. Yep. Wow. I work with her. Man. And she's coming out with new music this month as well. Man, that's incredible right there. I mean, you know, Cash Money was always somebody I looked up to. I mean, Jazzy Jeff too, but Cash Money just had a little bit more swag to me. You know, he right. had he had some cuts and he was turn table, uh, uh, turn table, uh, uh, turn table, uh, uh, turn table, uh, uh, turn table. You know what I mean? And you know, the MC was cool. He was kind of like a fresh prince, uh, they call him marvelous. But I just listened to it just to hear his cuts, you know, just to hear his cuts, man, because his right. cuts were, they were so ahead of its time, too. Yeah, like a lot so of only Cash Money or other people? Yeah, DJ, uh, DJ Cash Money, uh, DJ Aladdin from Compton, you know, one of our hometown heroes over here. Uh, who else? Uh, Grammix of TDC, Cubert, which is probably oh, one yeah. of the most sickest DJs in the world. And these were cats that I grew up with. So it was amazing to see them, you know, skyrocket real high to, yeah. to the point of, of having their own turntables and whatnot. So having been this long in the industry and worked with so many people, are there still people on your bucket list that you would want to work with? You know, that's a good question. Um, the people that I did, they they passed away. Like, I wanted to work with Michael Jackson, you know what I mean? So All right. Out of the ordinary stuff, you know. Um, I would say... That's a good oh, man. I can't even call it because right now, you know, all the artists that I really wanted to work with as far as in hip hop, I have. Um, yeah. They'll probably be producers more than the artists. So which producers would you want to work with? Oh, Dr. Dre, man. Dr. Dre and uh, Timberland. So what's going on with that? We're speaking it into existence now. How, yeah, how are we going to make that happen? We're going to talk to Missy Elliott because I know Missy Elliott pretty good and we're going to see what she can do about Timberland. And once we get to Timberland, I know he knows Dr. Dre. My friend who I gave a drum machine to when we were in high school is Dr. Dre's best friend now. So uh, yeah, you got the you got the hookup somewhere, the connection yeah, somewhere. Fred, 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 I taught Fred Rick how to make beats and now he's making beats for Dr. Dre. Oh, cool. That's experience. awesome. So if you know Missy, I need you to hit her up to be on my live because I love Missy. Oh, yeah. I love to talk to her. We'll make that happen. Thank you. I appreciate that. That would be great. We'll see if that yeah. happens. <laughs> and shout out to the person that was uh, giving uh, Easy my motion. A shout out, man. 
I don't know she, whoever that was. That was uh, Stacy Bay. I think that yeah, was Stacy Bay. Yeah, Stacy is probably tripping out because I know his real name and everything. Eric Racinus. That's his name. <laughs> well, that's how you know you know somebody when you're calling out the government names. <laughs> oh, yeah, indeed. Um, yep. So, um, yeah, so you didn't know anybody right now off the top of your head as far as artists? That um, I'm trying to think. That, That's a good question. I mean, because I'm thinking new school. I don't want to think like old school because yeah, think new school. Who who are some of the new cats that you listen to? Kendrick Lamar. I would like to work with Kendrick Lamar. Okay, that's a good yeah. one. He's yeah. on your side. And Eric Sermon, even though he's still old, you know, he's still doing his thing. No, but he's I still he's Eric still with it. Yeah, I talked with him. We talked about it. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, if you already know him, you just hit him up and say, hey, I had a talk with Pay, and she wants her turntables, and we need to work together. That's what you need to tell him. Exactly. He's going to laugh. Exactly. We got to have the turntables first, and then after we'll bring in my, uh, you know, uh, song that I do with him. Maybe we might put you on the song. We will put you on the song. We want you on the intro. You're going to do the intro like your radio show. All right, cool. Because I was going to do a whole exactly. album with Eric Sermon. Man, let's do it. I'm down like four flat tires. And yeah, you know, Eric told me in the live we had I had witnesses and all that he was going to produce my whole album even if I sucked <laughs> but, can you rap but that's okay hey, Fresh, do you uh, rap we'll in? see what I'll do we'll, we'll, we'll work it out I'll see what I feel like doing over there. I heard you have the, the voice of an angel who me? no I can't sing I can sing background I can do the ad libs that's about it but you know what? We have the uh, the T pain effect for you now. Yeah, but you know I don't want to really mess with that because that's not me. I'll rap before I sing. Yep, right. I'll do that. But um, anyway, so people, if you still have questions for King of Sad, please put them in the question box and I'll get to them. Um, yes, tell me, tell me one of the things that. Okay, because you know, you, having been in this industry, I know you've seen a lot and you've come across a lot of crazy situations. Tell me the craziest situation you've ever found yourself in. In music? Yeah, in well, touring or, you know. Give me an anecdote. Shot at, getting shot at. That's, that's the craziest shit I've ever been through. And bullets weren't meant for me or any of the members I was with. Oh, wow. People, they, they Where was that? Coming. That was in the Bay Area. I think it was in Hayward. Uh, we were performing. It was me and a brother by the name of Cisco, the Frisco Mac, and uh, we were just there to support the show. And all of a sudden, just you know, it was kind of like the the size of like a a, a gym at a school. Right. People started finding all you hear is gunshots and and see bright lights everywhere, and that was probably the most craziest thing that you know in the music industry that I've seen. You know, but of course I've heard of worse things than that of people getting actually hit and killed you know what i mean but uh right well you yeah, weren't that, hurt you got you didn't get hit or anything right i went straight to the floor oh wow I on the floor and everybody hit the floor after that right all right hey i have a few more questions i got one from my good friend hip-hop collector he says hip -hop collector. yep as I, he says as i have several of your albums i'm curious which one you are the most proud of Man, you know what? Uh, I would say probably my first one. My first one was called Lyrical Prophecy. Uh, that record probably goes for like three or four hundred dollars now a pop because it was made, you know, with uh, Rest in Peace Quiz One. He was on there. Um, it's like a collector's item to a lot of the hip hop collectors. He probably knows what I'm talking about. Um, yeah, he probably knows. I made that record with a, with a guy by the name of Chris Cut, which everybody knows now by Peanut Butter Wolf. Oh, so wow. <laughs> Me and Peanut Butter Wolf, you know, we started I out I love together. that guy. He's so dope. I met him a couple yeah. times. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's always out there in Amsterdam. He's right? always out here. Yeah, exactly. So, so we started together, me and uh, Chris Manic, which is his real name, and we made that first record, Lyrical Prophecy. That's probably the cool. most, you know, record. Because it's I'm the first, too, about. so that's always special. Yeah. Man, uh, good times back then, you know. I'm not saying that there's no more good times, but back then there was something special about hip hop because it was new and it was like, it meant everything to us as far right. as the, everything. I have another and question. Charisma too, man, because Charisma was his artist, which was one of my good friends. I was on Charisma's album too. I remember Charisma, yeah. Yeah. 
I did the and reggae. I feel stuff. old now. <laughs> yeah, if you hear any ad libs and reggae on his album, that's me doing the little reggae. Oh, that's funny. See, that would be my role. I can do the ad libs. <laughs> oh, that's dope. Um, some ad libs. I'm gonna hold you up to that too, pay for That's fine. Get me, get me in there. I got studio so I can record everything. So to do some ad libs tonight. We're always working over here. Always. Well, I don't have a setup at home, but I got a studio. Uh, and, you know, I can I can go to the studio. Oh, okay. um, my partner says, if an ideal studio setup was prepared for you, what pieces of gear would you find to be mandatory? Mandatory. That's a good question because if he's talking about creating, uh, that's a you know I have a, a industry standard when it comes to recording. Of course, it's Pro Tools to actually do the recording. Um, but as far as mandatory equipment there, the machine. He oh, wow. Yeah, the machine. Because the machine is, it, I've worked with a lot of drum machines and even the right. older ones. Um, the machine just seems to hands down have everything there for me. And That's the only um, mandatory piece? That's all I need. That's all literally what I need because it does everything, all my sounds. As long as I have my sounds with me, then it's all good. I could use any piece of machine, really, but the machine is more get around. I know it, you know, like the back of my hand, I could, you know, uh, cut and splice certain samples. Right, right. <laughs> the sounds that come in it, the factory sounds are dope, too, so I can use those. Uh, I could order refills from, the, you know, the website, download them. I actually have it on my phone. You could get it on your phone, too, so all your producers out there. That's what I was uh, going to say. Can you bring, do you bring it with you when you don't go touring? Yeah, all the time when I'm on the plane. Right. I, uh, mess with my phone all right um i'm gonna ha ask one more question uh jimmy i don't even know if you're for real with this question but he asked have you ever thought about doing a style class for younger guys to develop style and swagger i can't even take oh, this guy serious we're gonna, pop our collar. we're gonna pop our collar and paint it where it ain't now he got me going into the swag mode right now you know what i mean <laughs> uh definitely uh i could dig that like two shovels jack you know what i mean i'm gonna keep the uh hydraulics hopping out here in front of the palm tree I'm going to keep that actually, you know, lit up for y'all. I'm going to keep it energized. I'm going to keep the battery chargers on it. I'm going to have RV batteries in the back of my trunk so my low rider can go bunny hop on all four, actually. We're going to bunny hop. So the swag is there. You stay in tune right here in Payfresh. We might have a little swagger school happening. You never know. And we're going to keep the S-W-A-G-G-E-R in full effect. You know what? I'm just I'm just laughing at you taking that that question serious because Jimmy's a fool. Um I but yeah, that anyway. That's like the best question ever right now. <laughs> well, I'm you glad I swag. asked it. And I wasn't even trying to have swag. This is like natural, but like you seen I went into my swag mode. That's my swag I know. Mode. That's so hilarious. Um, yeah, I'll pop my collar for that. Um, anyway, uh, as we are finishing up our, our conversation, I want to thank you for being part of my, my motivational talks. Uh, do you have some advice for everybody that will be tuned in later on as well on uh, life or whatever? What's your advice? My advice is to keep God first. You know what I mean? I'm a true believer in God, and I believe that I'm still here and alive because of him. That and a lot amen. of... Amen. Amen to that. Thank you, yes. Kay Fresh. Um, and to just stay busy with, with whatever you're doing, whatever in life, whether it's music, real estate, having your own show like Pay Fresh here is don't ever give up. Just, you know, there's going to be times when they get hard, you know, and like we were talking about, you know, uh, financial yeah. situation, you know, things in this business come in lump sums, just like when any other business, you know, you want to just stay dedicated to it because it's you want to be able to love what you're doing, first of all. Yes. Don't do it. Don't love, you know. Oh, I'm definitely down with that. Don't ever do anything you don't love because you only have one life. No life to live. That's right. Yep. And that's Thank you yeah. so much. Thank you so much. For being part honey. of this. And stay prayed up, everybody. You know, and uh, don't forget, uh, when you get your blessings, don't forget to give those blessings out, too, because God's giving you gifts to receive, but it's also up to you to give. Yes, always. That's, this, right. that's what I'm doing through this show. I'm giving back through this show. People can, can learn from it, can take from it what they will, and hopefully stay inspired and motivated. That's right. That's right. A beautiful show you have here. And man, thank God I met you on Clubhouse, you know what I mean? And here we are now. I know. And show. here I am going to do an intro on your, your, your song with Eric Sermon. <laughs> oh, man, exactly, man. That's going to be going down. And I'm sorry I was late 10 minutes, man. 
the wife. You were late half an hour, but that's okay. <laughs> oh, was it a half? Then I owe another half hour. You know, we could do another half hour. We can do a follow up. We can do a follow up. Yeah, whenever you're ready. I All right. I'll because, keep you posted. I'll let you know. Indeed. All right. Man. Thank you so much, King. An honor to be here. I love you, and I love all the listeners out there, man. Keep it, you know, keep God first and, and stay positive. That's the main thing, especially through these hard times of COVID. We're going to get over this, man. All we got to do yes. is speak it into existence, like you said. Yes, exactly. Speak it into existence. We're going to be okay. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, and I wish you a, a blessed day and a great rest of your week, and we'll be in touch. You too, likewise. And get Missy for me. I'm going to hook that up. Actually, are you on Twitter? I'm on Twitter. Text, text me your Twitter, because that's how right. I talk to you. There. Cool. Yeah. I'll hit you up, and uh, we'll make it happen. Thank you so much. Thank you, Pay Fresh. All right. Good time. One love. Peace. Bye. All right, guys. Thank you for tuning in. That was uh, DJ King Assassin. Half hour late, but, you know, we got some, we got some stories uh, on how we navigated the industry and who we work with. Uh, I appreciate everybody that was tuned in. I appreciate Mitchie Slick. Trust me, he he definitely tried, even though he's driving through some some dead areas. Um, I appreciate my family being in here. Uh, Jimmy, your question was apparently the best question what that was asked. Not even mine, but yours. <laughs> I, I don't even know what to say, but um, yeah, I did a 20 minute monologue. I did 10 minutes with Mitchie and then a half hour with DJ King Assassin. This was a, a, an amazing live. It was something different. It was something uh, uh, out of the ordinary. And uh, Dwight, yes, maybe I should have you on for some history lessons. Uh, hopefully I'll get Missy at some point. Um, I may uh, get an album done. Who knows? Who knows? Anything can happen. Anything can be thrown out here in these lives and be uh, spoken into existence. Um, I actually have Nature on Monday. I'm so excited for that one. I have a special outfit that I'm going to rock for that one. And so, Nature, you better be ready. Put on your good shoes. Um, yes, I appreciate everybody. <laughs> coming in here and supporting me throughout these crazy lives. Um, yeah, if there's an after party, I'll be there. Everybody go on Clubhouse Battle for the Throne Club. That's my family. I'm just going to big everybody up. Thank you, Lou, for being here. Uh, whoever was in here who I didn't shout out, I appreciate you. Hype, thank you so much for tuning in with the engineering uh, stuff. Hip Hop Collector, man, I don't even know how many records you have, but I'm going to have to talk to you in person at some point because I think the borders are open. So I'm going to be driving to you. My car got uh, serviced yesterday. So I'll be driving to you and, and go through your whole collection. Uh, I may bring you something, but no, no, I'm not going to bring you something because you got everything already. Uh, everybody stay healthy, stay safe and stay happy most of all and stay motivated. I will see you guys on Monday. Have a great week. Bye.